Union delegation to Sierra Leone has hosted its annual Europe Day on Tuesday 9th May 2023. Now the Europe Day also referred to as Truman Day is an annual celebration of peace and unity in Europe. In Sierra Leone this celebration brings together more than 400 European and Sierra Leonean dignitaries and international partners. The event was an excellent opportunity for companies, well these um, organizations to promote their image and brands and their activities through corporate sponsorship collaboration with the European Union delegation to Sierra Leone. The day was themed Solidarity and Unity. So this morning to talk on the day and the EU's role in Sierra Leone, well also into um, the 2023 June 24 multi-tier elections, we have Ambassador Manuel Muller head of delegation, head of the EU delegation in Sierra Leone. Good morning, Ambassador. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Fabian. Good morning, Samuel. Good I'm morning. very happy to be with you here. Mm. Let's talk about the history of the EU Day. Uh, tell us more about it. Yeah, uh, the EU Day is also called the Schumann Day and refers to the Schumann Declaration, which um, the former French Foreign Minister Robert Schumann has done in uh, 1950 on the 9th of May. And uh, the main element of it was um, to put uh, together under a um, common control some parts of the industry of uh, some European countries. Mm. And also um, to build step by step a Europe, starting with a de facto solidarity um, going to a more constitutional level. And it's very important um, to understand this in the historic context. Because um, as we all know, between 1870 and 1945, in Central Europe, we had three wars. There was mm. the war between mm. Germany and France of 1870-71. Uh, there was the First World War from 1914 to 1918 and then uh, the Second World War from 1939 to 1945. Mm -hmm. And at that time, at the end of the 40s, the beginning of the 50s, the so-called Cold War was visible and started. And the big question was, what can be made that in the future there will be peace in Europe? And uh, this was a starting point. And you can, of course, not build uh, peace and uh, a European Union within one day. It's a step-by-step -step policy which was taken. And I must say that um, Robert Schumann is one who really um, was the right person uh, to do it because his own biography shows how important it is um, to bring peace mm. into the region. He was born in Luxembourg by a mother who was Luxembourgish. His mother tongue was Luxembourgish. Um, his father was born as a French in Lorraine, but as Lorraine at that time was annexed by Germany, his father had the German citizenship, so mm -hmm. Robert Schumann was born as a German. He studied uh, mainly in Germany and also um, in other countries. He then started to be a lawyer in Lorraine, which at that time still was German, but after the First World War, it was then annexed again by France and then he became French. Mm. And he engaged in French uh, politics. He was in resistance against the Germans um, in the Second World War. And um, I think he understood from coming from this biography that you have to stop all these things of war, annexation, violence and so on, and to bring peace to Europe. And as of course, coal and steel are in um, uh, are, are core elements of an industry which also can be misused uh, in uh, times of war. This was the first step to then in 1951 create the European community of coal and steel. And six countries came together um, and now their coal and steel industry was under a common joint control which is um, very important. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1957 with the Rome treaties um, a European economic community um, was uh, created, which then was the core of today's European Union with 27 member states, which developed over the years. And um, as Robert Schumann's declaration started uh, also 
in um, uh, talking about a de facto solidarity which comes up. Um, as peace is important, this um, de facto solidarity, the Un European Union, of course, today uh, shows to uh, Ukraine. Um, Ukraine is victim of the Russian uh, aggression. And our Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, for example, for celebrating Europe Day, she was in Kiev in Ukraine to clearly mm. show our uh, position on that. So de facto solidarity, this is very much important. And we, of course, as I mentioned, Ukraine, we know about uh, the difficulties which the Russian mm. aggression on Ukraine uh, brought to food security around the world, to the food prices, to the fuel prices, make many countries suffering. We will continue in our projects we are doing here to help Sierra Leone on its way um, uh, to get less import uh, dependent. And uh, I would be happy when we talk about and as our you, projects yeah, as to you come go back there, to that. Let's head to um, the EU's work with Sierra Leone mm. in Sierra Leone. Mm. In what areas does the EU work with Sierra Leone? We have a long-standing partnership with Sierra Leone and we have accompanied the country for many years, mm. also mainly uh, after the Civil War. And our current program, which is a program uh, from 2021 mm. to 2024, um, is a program with an overall amount of 245 million euros. Mm. Um, will be mainly implemented in the area with that we call green economy. This includes um, sustainable energy and agriculture in um, the area of education, which is one flagship project of um, the government and also the European Union uh, thinks that human capital development is very important. And thirdly, um, in the area of governance, and uh, this includes um, support uh, to different institutions and also in the mm. framework um, of uh, support to election management bodies. So, so let's get to talk. Um, let's first deal with governance. What are your interventions in the area of governance? The European Union in the area of governance, for example, um, has one project which deals with decentralization. Mm. And uh, we are working there with um, the district councils in six different districts and with civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. The aim uh, of these projects are to um, give uh, the possibility to um, the uh, district councils um, to implement um, a, a ser better service uh, delivery uh, to the people, mm -hmm. uh, together also uh, with the civil society. I think working together there is uh, very much important. If you wish, I can give you some concrete examples. Yes, please um, right. So, and please allow me to have a look into my notes, because right um, as we are doing a lot in this area, um, I would not like to give you wrong information. So, for example, in, in Kenema, mm -hmm. um, the district councils uh, then have built two markets and recently inaugurated... <laughs> ...built two markets and recently inaugurated uh, markets in Blama and Tongo. And um, these new markets then can help to revamp local uh, business um, and... Uh, um, then also in Kenema, um, the district council constructed a funeral home, multi-purpose whole roads and culverts with um, the support uh, of the European Union. Something similar in Pujahun, um, culverts, solar panels, markets and community centers, as well as 46 water facilities. In Falaba, the district councils um, built feeder roads and culverts, solar panels and markets with our support and in Karene, um, a community hall, for example, solar panels, culverts, markets, and also grain stores. So um, working um, at this area is uh, important uh, because mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's a clear policy also of the government, and uh, we are also convinced of that, that decentralization can help uh, people on the ground. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, this was one, one of our important projects in governance. Another one, support to the electoral management bodies, mm -hmm. for example, through technical assistance. 
but um, also through an organization which is called International IDEA, which uh, recently mm. arrived which will continue even beyond the elections, working with the election <laughs> monitoring bodies, with CSOs, mm -hmm. um, with um, national elect election observers. Mm -hmm. And um, then the European Union has given the support uh, to UNDP um, to uh, assist election management bodies uh, during uh, the upcoming elections in some areas. For example, mm -hmm. just recently, and I must say it's not only EU as an institution, it's also member states of the EU, mm -hmm. like Ireland, who are contributing to that. Um, we have together um, with UNDP commissioned uh, furniture for a multi-purpose meeting room mm -hmm. at the PPRC. They need a big room. And uh, they have formulated this need, and uh, UNDP, um, with our funds, uh, has responded to that. So this is another example uh, where in the area um, of governance uh, we can uh, give them support. So, so, so um, now you've just mentioned the issue of um, um, support to the electoral management bodies, mm -hmm. and, um, and um, also you also always have observers' mission and team mm -hmm. coming in um, to the country. Now, the, 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 the observers' team, I'm pretty sure, is here right now the, from the EU. So with what you, um, the EU has been doing to support in civilian's democratic process, um, how would you um, measure the impact of your um, technical and um, financial support to the electoral management, board, to the elections management bodies, to just keep um, our democracy growing? The European Union has deployed electoral observation missions mm -hmm. for the last 20 years at four previous elections, and now it's the fifth election with a mm. full-fledged mission. Um, I think it's important to see how these missions work. They are usually um, headed by a member of a European Parliament. Yeah. They follow a determined um, methodology mm. and uh, they finish with a report on uh, the overall situation including um, also giving recommendations uh, to the electoral management bodies and mm -hmm. uh, the government in the country. Mm. So um, this year the high representative of the European Union for Foreign Policy, Mr. Mm. Josep uh, Borrell, has um, um, appointed Mrs. Evind Inchir, mm -hmm. um, who is a Swedish uh, member of the European Parliament, to um, be the chief election observer of uh, this electoral mission mm -hmm. that um, uh, will come to Sierra Leone on invitation of um, the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a previous uh, preparation mission here in February, which talked with all the stakeholders also to um, be sure um, if uh, an election uh, observation mission is wished by everyone and uh, there was uh, an overall positive feedback um, that we got. So this is a long-term mission. Mm. So the mission will not only be here on election day. Mm. The mission um, has also long-term observers and the first core team members already have arrived mm. and uh, they are now building up the mission. The um, long-term observers arrive next week, like also the um, chief electoral observer and um, then the mission will uh, start uh, to be deployed also mm. um, all over the country because they are not only here in Freetown. And on election day, around election day, some more short-term observers uh, will come from all countries in Europe, but also Norway, Swiss, and Canada, which is also part of um, this EU election observation teams. And um, uh, they will uh, then do the observation work um, on election day, uh, the tallying, and um, so uh, this is what I can give you as a background mm -hmm. on that. Now, of course, as the mission is there, and the mission is independent, also independent from the EU delegation, much further detailed information will be provided uh, to the stakeholders and to the broader public by the mission um, uh, itself. They will also start a social media presence. Mm. Uh, we will share it on our 
on our social media uh, website so that people who are interested can follow. Perhaps um, because it, it, it gets in very sensitive in Sierra Leone right now with the elections, mm. um, 39 days to, to the June pools. And um, the, the fact that the team is here this early, are, are there engagements planned with the team, especially to me with um, the elect elections commission, or, um, or the elections office, the PPRC, the political parties, just to have that confidence and trust in the process and so that the observers will be able to have first-hand information from the players in the elections? This is a very important question because, of course, um, the European Union electoral observation mission, like all other election mm. observation missions, of course, will interact with the main stakeholders. And the main stakeholders are the electoral management bodies, mm. um, mainly ECSL and uh, PPRC, um, but also all others who mm. are related uh, to elections, um, be it uh, election security and so on. Mm. So there will be um, um, a lot of the way uh, towards election day, mm -hmm. um, but this is then the task um, of the electoral observation mission, um, which as I said is yeah. independent from the delegation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, now let's talk about directly um, the other areas of your interventions mm -hmm. in Sierra Leone's development yeah. agenda. We've talked about uh, governance. Mm -hmm. Now, take us through the other areas of interventions and how they've been um, impacting the growth of Sierra Leone. Yeah. For a long time, um, European Union has supported um, large parts of the road network mm. in uh, Sierra Leone. This was financed out of the European Development Fund uh, during the last decades. Mm -hmm. And 85% uh, uh, um, of uh, the road mm. between Liberian and Guinean border has been built by the road authority with funds uh, coming from the European Union. Mm. And uh, I was very happy that uh, in 2022, um, two bridges were commissioned by President uh, Biu to the broader public, the bridge in uh, Mabang and the bridge in Magbele, which are also part of um, uh, the projects um, uh, which the Road Authority built with funding uh, of the European Union. Um, this gives interconnectivity in the region, and this is what we in Europe call the Global Gateway. Mm -hmm. The Global Gateway Initiative is one of the main initiatives that um, European Union has with Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, this includes all kinds of infrastructure um, um, works. Uh, it might be roads, um, it might be in energy sector, it might be also in, in, in education, mm. uh, for example, constructions, you need also in education. Um, and uh, I'm very happy uh, that uh, this is of, of a lot of use uh, to the development um, of the country because um, uh, these roads make it much easier to come from mm -hmm. one place to another place. And I was told by people who knew um, how the situation of the roads were before, um, how this uh, contributed to improvement. We have currently a very interesting uh, program together with the International Labour Organization, um, which is called Opportunity Salon. And in this context, um, around uh, 200 kilometers of feeder roads um, will be built uh, within uh, the upcoming 36 uh, months. Mm -hmm. uh, 50 kilometers have already been built and this creates of course job in, uh, in some regions where then also agricultural goods can be uh, better transported. So, so these kind um, of works uh, where Uni European Union uh, is known for uh, having funded it um, I feel were very important and uh, of course, um, in the sector of, uh, of green, uh, now green sector, mm -hmm. we will continue to work um, uh, in the area of agriculture. This is important, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, all countries in the world now have uh, the interest to get less uh, import uh, dependent. 
um, on food. And the country has a high potential and um, the government, private companies are working uh, towards uh, um, a more efficient use uh, of agriculture. European Union has been in the sector, has working, been working, for example, with SLARI, the Sierra Leonean Agricultural Research Institute, uh, um, an institute which, for example, researches on which kind of crops uh, are of better use here in mm. uh, the country. We have an interesting regional uh, project, um, uh, West African Competitive Program, which um, helps West African countries, including Sierra Leone, um, on uh, creating better value chain opportunities. For example, here in Sierra Leone, Wacom, together with um, cooperatives and also with the private sector, has worked in the area of uh, cocoa, cassava, and palm oil, um, putting, uh, for example, also palm oil mills in, in place, mm -hmm. and um, has also worked with the Sierra Leonean um, Bureau of Standardization mm -hmm. on, uh, on better uh, possibilities of standardization together with UNIDO and now recently um, a, a new mechanism was introduced uh, here with the support of uh, UNIDO which makes that Sierra Leone and the Mano River Union is the first uh, country internationally um, um, uh, certified uh, for um, uh, with an institute internationally certif can, uh, certified which can establish for example if uh, several standards um, international standards um, are fulfilled or not so this is very important uh, because one thing and I mentioned the word value chain production um, this is something where uh, European Union feels uh, um, we wish uh, to continue to support the efforts of Sierra Leone mm -hmm. to uh, not only export uh, primary um, uh, produce, but uh, products produced here in the country. And one element identified together with our Sierra Leonean partners as a problem is the access to finance, for example. If you are a private, um, small, micro um, uh, or medium enterprise and um, you need uh, a loan in order to set up uh, your business, then you are confronted to interest rates which are um, very high. Mm. Therefore, in the framework of our next year's uh, program for the next 36 months. We have um, um, started a partnership with UNCDF, um, the United Nations Capital Development Fund. Mm -hmm. They will work together with commercial banks here um, and with European money um, uh, there will be created a possibility to give loans to a more, to a lower interest rate um, and uh, this will allow much more of especially uh, the smaller and medium uh, enterprises to um, get the necessary loans uh, to set up value chain uh, production. And um, this, I think, uh, can help um, the boosting the economy of the country. Uh, usually, with the um, you know, international community we have in the country, they do have their you know, set priority areas in terms of intervention to the country. Uh, what's the EU, uh, you know, priority areas? I mean, priority areas uh, of our intervention are usually set uh, together with the government. Yeah, we, we, we don't come from outside and uh, say what we think is the best to do, but uh, we see what the needs uh, defined by the government are. And uh, we work, uh, of course, um, on the basis of uh, the national uh, development plan um, that uh, the government has uh, decided. Um, we now, for the next years, have agreed uh, with the government on the areas of uh, green economy, of education, and uh, of a continuation of our support uh, to governance. Um, in February 2021, there was uh, AU EU summit in Brussels. In this framework, 
the EU confirmed uh, to President Biu that in these areas the 245 uh, million euros will be used um, and it will be implemented through different uh, mechanisms. Um, we, there are some areas where still um, we are defining um, how we will intervene and where we will intervene. There are talks going on, of course, with the Ministry of Plan. We have a very good cooperation with the Ministry of Plan, which is uh, one of our key interlocutors and um, of other ministries, but also with the civil society. We have civil society grants, for example. Uh, there was a call for proposal uh, recently where um, then NGOs were chosen <coughs> to intervene um, in the provinces also with regards to <coughs> empowering uh, women. Uh, perhaps I may come, if you allow, to one important area <coughs> that um, uh, of our intervention that uh, we share um, with uh, uh, the government is education. Um, education is an investment into the future of the country, mm. into future generations. And what is invested today mm. in education will help in the future to develop in many of the other areas I just mentioned. The European Union, for example, has given um, a support to um, the um, uh, school program, school feeding program through the World Bank. We had given 13 million euros through a World Bank trust fund um, to ensure uh, this, uh, the implementation, to cont contribute to ensuring the implementation of this program. And we also have uh, investors in, in the renovation of um, 100 schools, primary schools in the country. And um, just an anecdote, if I arrive, when I arrived here in the country one and a half years ago, one of my first visits um, at the, uh, in the provinces uh, was uh, for the inauguration of one of these schools by President Bio. And uh, before the ceremony started, uh, I was there and uh, talked with some of the school children. And mm. uh, there was a boy, I asked him, what do you like in school? And then he said, mathematics. <laughs> and then I asked him, yeah, and when you are adult, what would you like to be? What, what kind of profession? And then he said, president of the republic. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see there are um, children uh, with a lot of ambition. They will now have um, the opportunity to go through school. If this um, small boy wants to be president or not, mm. I don't know. But I think we can be sure that if you have the possibility to learn in a school which is uh, duly renovated and um, which allows you to undergo uh, normal. This is the all new Ergo Smart Base from Temper Program. You will have the possibility later on to get uh, a good job and. Uh, European Union is happy to contribute to that. In the past, we also contributed um, uh, for the work of the Teachers' Commission um, um, and uh, in the area of uh, education, uh, there was also support on the uh, digitalization of pe the teachers' uh, payroll, for example. So this is an area which um, is very important and uh, where we will continue activities also. Um, and Wells on Facebook says the Mabang and Mabili bridges are laudable projects. Thank you, EU. Uh, well, we'll just take that as the vote of thanks for Sierra Leone <laughs> and Wells. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. But yes, as we wrap up the um, um, segment in, 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 in summary, what would be your closing courtesies to Sierra Leoneans and to the audience. I'm very happy to be in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is a peaceful country. It's an excellent example that after the end of the civil war, you can come to democracy, you can come to stability. And I'm really amazed uh, by the religious tolerance that you have here in the country. There's no religious extremism, there is no terrorism, and uh, people are very nice and open uh, to everyone. Mm. And I think that it's very important uh, to underline that uh, for the future of the country, the most important is to continue 
to work on the basis of peace, of democracy, mm. of uh, free and transparent uh, elections, so that people are the ones who decide who are at the summit of the state to govern them. And this also contributes to sustainable development and to stability in the country. I would like to thank to all the Sierra Leoneans, to all those we are working together with. Um, you are great people and uh, I wish you all the best uh, for having democratic, transparent and free and competitive mm. elections. Thank you very much Ambassador Manuel Mulavas this morning in the programme.